Hey. Check one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, a hey. One, two, buckle my shoe. Three, four, shut the door. Five, six, pick up six, seven, eight, and eight, and straight. Nine, ten, do it again. Ten, do it again. Okay. One, okay. two, buckle one, my shoe. Two, buckle my shoe. Door, shut three, the door. Five, six, six, four, six, five, six, 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 One, two, buckle my shoe, two, three, buckle my shoe, shut the door, five, six, pick it up, six, seven, eight, lay that straight, nine, six, ten, do it again. Uh, 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 can you hear me? Let's go. What's the other one? Um, The Continental Soldier. What's that one? Yo, welcome to One Church. Here we go. Want to buy some merch? Uh. <laughs> I can't walk around to save my life. <laughs> Con I. Oh, I only know the con I Joe. That's it. That's one. <laughs> What's the co continental soldier one? The throw it over your shoulder like a continental soldier. Do your ears hang low? Do your ears hang low? Do they wobble to and fro? Can you tie them in a knot? Can you tie them in a bow? Can you throw them over your shoulder like a continental soldier? Do your ears hang low? Uh. Do your ears hang low? Do they wobble to and fro? Can you tie them in a knot? Can you tie them in a bow? Can you throw them over your shoulder like a continental soldier? Hey, am I still supposed to be going? Okay, great.
right. Good morning. Welcome to church. I'm going to take this off so I can talk while I'm up here. Hey, we're so glad you joined us this morning. It is a big, crazy morning with our technology. Hopefully, we're working. You can hear us. Uh, we are, I think, live on Facebook. Live on Facebook. And they can hear us. That's good. Hey, we have accomplished something this morning. We can all pray and go home. Uh, just kidding. All right. Uh, man, we are one church, multiple locations. Uh, so we have locations uh, so we meeting have in location six different campuses six different this campuses morning, and our seventh campus will meet tonight. We'll meet tonight. So tonight. it's great to be a part of one church. And if you didn't know that, you're here at Riverbank, just in case you were wondering. If you got lost and you ended up here. But uh, if you're watching us online, we're so grateful that you're joining us. Uh, it's going to be a great day. We say this around here. Uh, we're real people with real issues finding a real hope. And that hope is Jesus Christ. And the real issues, well, we all got them. So we just deal with it and we work through it with Jesus. So thanks for being here. Thanks for joining us. Now, we do like to connect. So it's a weird season with COVID. So our connections are different. So we want you to fill out the Connect card on the app. Let us know that you're here, you're a part of today. If it's your first time at the Hub, we have a gift for you. You fill that card out, drop by the Hub as you're on your way out. We'll give you that free gift. If it's your second time, we're grateful that you came back. It's always amazing that people come back the second time. That's a good thing. So um, if you came back a second time, we got a $10 gift card we want to give you and bless you with. So Come check it out. Meet us at the Hub. We want to get to know you and learn your names. All right. We're going to stand. The worship team is going to kick it off this morning, and I'm going to pray. Lord, thank you for a great day. Thank you for your grace in our lives. We pray that you be with us throughout this service. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. Sing with us. Praise the name, Lord. We sing it out. We say, Who breaks the power? Who breaks the power? Sin and darkness. Love is mighty. So much stronger. King of glory. King above all. Who shakes the whole earth? Who shakes the whole earth? Holy thunder, he's as breathless and all in wonder. The King of glory, King above all kings. We say it out, we say, This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place, that you would bear my cross. You lay down your life, you lay down your life, that I would be set free. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Yeah. Worship you, Lord. Yeah. Who brings our chaos? We say, Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? King of glory, King of glory, who rules the nations? Truth and justice shines like the sun. All love is brilliant, King of glory, King above all things. We sing it out, we say, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. We 
that never fails, Lord. And so we rest in your unchanging nature, God. We rest in your unchanging nature. We give you all the praise this morning. Amen. Amen. You guys can have a seat. Um, I'm Shelly Traub. Welcome to church. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Um, hey, I just want to give you a few quick updates of things that are going on today and throughout this week at One Church, okay? So uh, let's see. On Thursday night, the 5th, at the Modesto campus is an all one church, all seven campuses, young adults event. That's going to be at uh, 7 p.m. Need to Oh, it's on this board. That's nice. It's going to be at 7 p.m. at the Modesto campus. If you have not attended a young adult service and you're in that age group, 18 to 30 ish, then come on out. Those guys are killing it. Audrey's going to be there, a bunch of people from one church, Riverbank are going to be there. So go on out on Thursday night at 7 o'clock, okay, at the Modesto campus. It's going to be fun. Great time. Um, also, you know, it's election season. I'm sure nobody needed to be, be reminded that it was election season, right? But it is election season, and we have a certified ballot box for people that attend our campuses outside on the campus. So if you attend one church and you want a safe place to drop off your ballot, you can drop your ballot off here uh, all the Sundays leading up to election. And it's a secure box. The next day, someone from the county voter's office will pick it up. It'll be taken there. The ballots will be taken and the box will be brought back. So by dropping it off in the box, you recognize that you certify that you understand that this is the process of how your ballot is going to be taken in, okay? So go ahead and drop off your ballot or plan for that for next weekend. Uh, tonight is also an all-network youth hangout night. It's hype night. It's going to be the biggest youth event of the fall season at the Modesto campus. It's from 5 to 7.30. All seven campuses are going to be out there. They're going to have food. They're going to have fun. They're going to have basketball. I hear there's going to be nine square. I even hear that there's going to be a mechanical bull out there. Okay. Pastor Tracy is going to be out there. If anybody can successfully keep Pastor Tracy off the mechanical bull, I will buy you lunch. All right? But good luck. You probably will not be successful. But if you are, I will be very grateful. Okay? Uh, let's see. I think that is all I have. Oh, Kingdom Builders is coming up soon. Kingdom Builders Sunday is coming up in November. So uh, if you're not a part of Kingdom Builders yet, it's uh, right up there is our Kingdom Builders wall. It's our giving above our offering, and it's the way that we as a church come together to support missions locally and around the globe. So put this on your calendar. Miracle Sunday is November 15th, all throughout one church, okay? I'm going to ask you to stand. I'm going to pray over the tithe and the offering, and we are going to go back into worship. Father, this morning... Lord, as we uh, come into your house, whether we come physically into your house or we come virtually into your house, Lord, it is still good to be with your people and to be in your presence, to worship together, Lord. 
And Lord, as we bring our tithe in different ways during this season, Lord, whether it's online or dropping it off at the hub or whatever way we set it up through text, however it is that we give, Lord, we give with the same heart and with the same posture. We give because one, we want to be obedient to you. And two, we know that you will bless it. You will bless the gift, you will bless the giver, Lord, and you will multiply what we give to go out through your kingdom that people's lives may be changed and they'll come to know you. So Father, we give graciously to you this morning. We give humbly to you this morning. And we consider it a privilege, Lord, to seed into your kingdom. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to have you stand. I think I was supposed to throw it to a video. Huh? I'm so sorry. I'm going to ask you guys to sit. I forgot that there's a video. This is like feeling like up, down, a little bit of calisthenics. Quick video, and then we'll go into worship. What is up, One Church Riverbank? Kyle and Marcia here. Hey, did you know that October is Pastor's... This month. Right now, we are in Pastor Appreciation That's Month. Right. And you guys have two of the best pastors... Incredible. ...that we think have ever existed in, on the face of this planet. Pastor Tracy and Shelly Traub. Oh, my goodness. These are people that have been with us since we came to One Church for the longest. Yep. They're loyal. They have such big hearts. They just love so deeply, um, and they have just pioneered such an authentic yeah. atmosphere at uh, the Riverbank campus. We love them. We know you love them. And this is Pastor Appreciation Month. There are so many ways that you should show your appreciation to your pastors, but I want to encourage you this month, you should consider giving in a special love offering for Pastor's Appreciation. You can do that online on our website or on our app. There's a little like drop down button that you can choose Pastor's Appreciation. You can always give in person. Just label that envelope Pastor's Appreciation. It's one of the ways you can say very tangibly, thank you and we love you to your pastors, to the pastors at One Church. We think that you, One Church Riverbank, probably have an opportunity in front of you just to pour some love on two people who literally give their lives to you. And so we want to say thank you for considering how you can love your pastors this month. And yeah, Tracy and Shelly, we want you to know how much we love you. Yeah. Um, you're incredible friends, incredible ministers, and we're so grateful that God brought you to One Church years and years ago, but he's still kept you here and that you are the pastors of One Church River Bay doing an incredible work. We love you and we love all of you. God bless. God bless you. All right, let's stand back to our feet. Is everyone okay with that? We get back into worship, amen? Oh, we love you today, Lord.
say that this morning. Say, Lord, you are good. Sing it one more time. Just say, Lord, you are good. Lord, we thank you this morning, Lord. This next song, before we get into it, it's a song talking about revival, and God starting revival, and asking him to pour it out, but I firmly believe that before revival starts here, it has to start here. So before we even get into this song, I'm going to ask, we, we're free to worship however we want, but just, just hear me out. I'm going to ask that you close your eyes and be the only one in the room right now. Place your hand over your heart. And just like the scripture says, King David says, create in me, Lord, a new heart. Let's begin to allow the Holy Spirit to do his work. Father, that you would come and you would make yourself home in this place, Lord, and begin to weed out the things that don't belong here. Lord, and, and, and even those things that I've put there myself and, and I've, I've kind of been hesitant to let go of, Father, this morning, you have permission. Father, I ask that even before we get into this song, that revival begins to start in here with me. That in each and every individual in this room, Lord, that revival begins to start in us. Oh, we love you, Jesus.
Say, Daddy, carry you? Because uh, every time she would come to me, I would say, Do you want me to carry you? So she would say, Daddy, carry you. And I remember at the time I had to tell her, Pick up your hand. Like, let, it's easier for me to kind of hook you and pick you up. And it was in that moment when I picked her up that God revealed to me, Dude, in those moments when you need me to carry you, lift up your hand. And it was huge for me because it, it, it broke chains in my worship. Because when I was standing in worship, it's like, God, I'm crying out to you. I need you. I'm here for you. But I personally never rose my hands. And it wasn't until that breakthrough that God revealed to me. I got freedom in this position. This is my, my, my stance of victory, my stance of freedom. And God says, come here, let me carry you. And I don't know where you stand today. And I don't know where you're at. But God is saying this morning, I'm here. And I need him to carry me this morning. So therefore, I will lift my hands when I worship it. And I would ask that you do the same as we sing it out. We say, God, come awaken your people, Lord. Come awaken your people.
there's no prison wall you can't break through, no mountain you can't move, all things are possible. There's no broken body you can raise, no soul that you can save, all things are possible. If you believe that last line there, that all things are possible, I need to ask you to agree with me in prayer for something this morning. You may know, may not know, but with multiple campuses, we got multiple campus pastors. One of our campus pastors from our St. John's, Pastor John, he's in the ICU unit right now uh, battling with this COVID-19. and He has no pre-existing conditions this guy is like one of the strongest guys I know. Uh, he's in his, his mid-60s, works out every morning. Like he's got guns that just scare me. Like I would not want to like get in a fight with this guy. He'd hurt me. And I'm a pretty big guy myself. But uh, it, it's just amazing how this, this disease, this virus ha has attacked him. And he's got some blood clots in his lungs. He's struggling to get oxygen. Um, and it's very serious. Uh, his wife, she's quarantined at home. She's not even allowed to go see him. Um, so there's adds another layer of just stress and unrest in this season. But I believe we serve a God of all things are possible. That there's nothing impossible when it comes to him. One of the things is we were texting and talking to Pastor Rick is he said, man, I really need you to pray for me because the nights are really hard. The nights are really hard. And we just sing about God can break through the darkness. He can light up the night. And so we've been praying that for Pastor Rick. But I, I'm going to invite you to join with me as we pray that God would heal him. And you may know somebody that's battling COVID-19. Destiny's husband, our weather worship leader, he's home battling COVID-19. We need to lift them up. We need God to do a miracle in their lives. So join me if you believe this. Lift your voices as we pray. Heavenly Father, we come against the, the attack of the enemy, Lord, that he would like to destroy Pastor Rick and all that Pastor Rick stands for, his faith, Lord, and is declaring your word, God. And we come against it in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray healing. Lord, I pray that you would break up the blood clots, that there would be no more blood clots. Lord, I pray against the, the pneumonia that is setting in, that you would clear it up, God, and you would bring health to his body, to his lungs, to his respiratory system, God. The Lord, today we would hear news of your work, God, in his life. And, Lord, as he's in the hospital and the night comes, Lord, may your Holy Spirit come in and shine the light of your peace and your grace. Lord, and there would be confidence in Pastor Rick this, this evening, Lord, as he would know you are his God. You are in control. Nothing is impossible for our God. So, Lord, we're praying healing. We're praying healing. We pray for Pastor Sherry and the family, the God, you'd be with them. Lord, I can't even imagine not being able to go to the hospital to be with her husband, Lord, and how much pressure and weight she's feeling. And so, Lord, I pray that you would lift the weight off of her, that, Lord, you'd be bringing peace into that household, Lord, that they would know that you are moving, you are working on their behalf, Lord. We praise you, God. Do a miracle. Do a miracle. Do a miracle. Lord, and for everyone who's battling this, everyone that we know that we're connected with this morning that is battling this virus, we come against it in the name of Jesus. We pray for Destiny and Daniel. Bring healing to Daniel. Protect that household. Protect their children. Lord, we serve a mighty God, and so, Lord, we trust in you, and we call upon your name. We're thankful today. We declare your miracles.
We declare that you have healed them. We declare that you have protected them. We declare it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen. Thank you for praying with me for my friend. You can be seated this morning. Love Pastor Rick. He is just uh, one of the best guys you'll ever meet. And uh, so just keep him in your prayers throughout this week. We will keep you updated as we get updates as well. So, all right. Well, what a great time. Thank you, worship team. Appreciate you guys. Thank you, tech team. Now, I know some of you see us sitting over here, and we're kind of in and out. It's not because we think we're something. Shelly is uh, overseeing children's ministry, so she's back and forth making sure our children's ministry is okay. I'm working with tech team to make sure our live stream is okay. We're not like, going out having coffee or donuts in the back. We, we're actually we're working, So, uh, but we're so grateful for our teams and all that they do. Well, this morning's a great morning. I'm glad you're here because I'm not speaking, so it's a good morning. For all of you, um, we are so privileged to have Pastor Sam Vigil, soon to be Pastor Johnson, right? All right, in Ju- January 3rd, right? You're all invited. It's a big meal. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. They're like, don't do that. We're on a budget, man. Come on. You're killing me. All right. But we're so excited. She's been with us for about four years with our, our One Church Network. Uh, she came and started and helped plant the Rippin Church and the Rippin Campus with Pastor Dave and Kim. And then this last year, um, if you've been around Sam, you know that she's a leader. You know that she makes things happen. And uh, we just felt as a team uh, that she would be the person that needs to come into our network at the bigger level as our executive uh, pastor to help us. And so we brought her on, I think a little before January, but uh, in this last year to really lead and guide us and help us in that position. And so she does just just doing a f- phenomenal job. Like all this stuff that we had to get ready for COVID, that was really on her and Jordan. And they put together so much information, all the signs. We just had to get them printed. They put it all together. Thank you so much for your leadership. Um, and, and your faithfulness to God. And so we're excited. She's going to be preaching this morning. So would you give it up for Pastor Sam Vigil this morning? I'll keep my distance because we're supposed to social distance. There. Thank you. Thank like you, Pastor Tracy. Do here. If I haven't had the chance to meet you yet, super excited to be up here this morning. And I just want to thank Pastors Tracy and Shelly for the privilege of just getting to share the pulpit. Um, Thank you for your leadership. I mean, I have not met more faith-filled, grace-filled, flexible, open-handed pastors than Tracy and Shelly. Like, you have phenomenal, incredible leaders. And yes, give it up for them. I, uh, as we were sitting in worship, I just felt the Lord, like, impress a word of encouragement on my heart for this congregation, just that he has given the Riverbank campus such a spirit of resiliency for such a time as this. I mean, you guys have had to pivot and adjust, and you were inside, and you were outside, and you were online, and you had to week to week make it happen in your teams, your volunteers, the people who come, like you are the body of Christ, you are the church, and the Lord has given you resiliency for such a time as this. He will see you through to the days of revival that are coming so soon. So praise God, he is so good. Um, I'm excited and honored to be up here this morning. I'm just going to dive right in. I know we're at the tail end of this incredible series, and I don't know about you, but it's been super cool for me just to return to learning about the armor of God. Maybe you've heard it preached on before. Maybe you grew up in Sunday school singing songs about it. Maybe you're an overachiever and you already had the armor of God memorized before we started this series. But I've loved just diving in and seeing this scripture in a new light. If you brought your Bible, turn with me to Ephesians chapter 6. This whole passage that we've set up camp in these last few weeks is all about being in battle. And scripture reinforces the truth that you and I, all of us, are in the midst of a battle. But the battle that we're getting ready to read about here in Ephesians chapter 6 is 
probably not the same one that comes to mind when you hear the word battle. Like for some of you, maybe battle is actually a trigger word. Maybe you're like, if you only knew the battle to get my kids to church this morning. If you only knew the battle to get my spouse to spend holidays with my family. Or for me, the battle to drag myself out of bed at 5 a.m. and leave the warmth of my blankets to get up for the day. Like a personal battle, okay? You and I are in a battle, no doubt. I just think a lot of times we end up miscalculating or we get caught up in our own little sphere. And so then what happens is we enter the wrong battle. And if 2020 has shown us anything, it is that there are no shortage of battles happening. In fact, there's a whole heaping, messy pile of battles going on. But as believers, our battles aren't the earthly ones. They aren't the temporary ones. They aren't the fleshly ones, although those are kind of fun to engage with, right? Like we kind of like being able to jump on Facebook and like enter into like whatever political battle is going on or stirring the pot at our family gathering with whatever the latest news headline says. But this is what scripture says about being in a battle. Ephesians chapter 6 verses 12 through 17 says, for our struggle, our battle, is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you've done everything, to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Take the helmet of salvation. It's kind of weird phrasing, right? Like, what's the helmet of salvation? That sounds like a very Christian-y phrase, doesn't it? But if we look at this sentence in the context of the entire passage, it starts to make a little bit more sense. The, The structure of Ephesians 6 is so rich with truth. I love it. If you jump back up to verse 11, if we look at this verse, it's instructive. It gives us something to do. The instructions are to put on the full armor of God. That's the directive. And then we're given the reason for the instruction. It says, so that you can stand against the devil's schemes. Like, okay, that makes sense in part. Like, we need to be ready for battle, so this is the how. And verse 12 takes it a step further. We're given the explanation of the problem to begin with. For our struggle is against the spiritual forces of evil. Because we're in a spiritual battle. Our battle is not against flesh and blood. My battle is not against my neighbor. No matter how many times they take my parking spot every time I come home. Our battle is not against our spouse. Our battle is not against our in-laws. Our battle is not against politics or social justice movements or a candidate that we despise. Scripture tells me that my battle is against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. This is not to be confused with the Harry Potter movie, okay? Verse 17 lays out the call to be equipped as believers. It says, take the helmet of salvation. The believer is to put on the helmet of salvation in order to do righteousness and to receive salvation. God's salvation is the ultimate assurance of protection. No piece of armor, 
No amount of knowledge or calculation or tactic or skill will ever compare to the heavenly assurance and supernatural protection that we receive through salvation. So in order for us to be readily equipped and adequately prepared for this spiritual battle that we're facing, we must first and foremost receive salvation in Christ. And this is not a religious ritual. It's not a, another routine that we just go through the motions of. Like if you've ever sat in church and heard the pastor give an invitation for salvation, maybe your tendency is to sort of tune out at the end of the message because you're just used to hearing it and it's what we do every church service. And in part, I think maybe the church at large or maybe at least the Western church has done a little bit of a disservice to the miracle that is salvation. Like when somebody crosses the line of faith and acknowledges that they can't fight this battle in their own strength, when we acknowledge that the measly armor that I'm bringing to the table is scraps at best, when somebody acknowledges the true power that is found in Jesus Christ's life, death, and resurrection, and when they acknowledge that as truth, when they recognize Jesus is the only source of truth, and then they make the decision to pattern their life after his, I think we've a little bit taken this for granted. Like when somebody decides, yes, I want to follow Jesus, that is monumental. The rest of us should be jumping for joy out of our seats, ecstatically enthusiastic because that person just made the best decision they have ever and will ever make in their entire lives. Scripture says all of heaven rejoices when somebody says yes to following Jesus. But instead, our tendency is to sometimes be like, okay, nobody look around we don't want to embarrass you. We don't want to make you feel awkward about this decision you're about to make. Like, it might be weird if people actually see you raise your hand for the Lord. And here's the thing. I say that a little bit tongue-in-cheek because I get why we do it. Like, I tend to give salvation calls that way a lot of the time. And I actually don't think that's bad or that's wrong to say or do. I mean, I was brand new to church at one point. And when I was the new person at church, I didn't know all the lyrics to the songs. I didn't know when to sit and when to stand. I didn't know what the heck salvation meant. All these people are looking around like, you really think I'm going to raise my hand and come forward? To heck no, I'm just trying to lay real low back here. Like, I'm trying to go very unnoticed, right? So, like, I get it. I'm not knocking that we do that at all. I think the Lord meets us right where we're at. We might be sitting in church way too afraid to ever raise our hand. And you know what? That's okay. The Lord takes us on a journey at a pace with him. The Lord loves you just as much as the person right up front jumping up and down. You're not a lesser Christian. You're not lower in the spiritual hierarchy if you're a little bit timid or shy. But I would challenge you with this thought. Do you know the power and the freedom and the exhilaration that comes when you release the opinions of everybody else in the room and you just focus on what Jesus is trying to do and say and change in you. And I know that's a lot easier said than done, but I promise you there is nothing like the freedom that Christ offers. There is nothing like a life passionately serving him. Like, you just can't compare it to anything, and it's worth risking everything for. It's worth being a little risky and raising your hand. It's worth the cost of being passionate and on fire. Like, so what if people think you're a little over the top? If people are going to think I'm over the top about anything, you bet your sweet life I want it to be that they think I'm over the top about Jesus, right? He is the only way to salvation, and salvation is the only way to stand in the midst of the spiritual battle. Okay, so having established that as our baseline, there's a battle happening within the battle. This is like inception, okay? Whether you're a believer or not, 
Whether you're sitting here and you are madly in love with Jesus Christ, or you're watching online, or you're sitting here and you're skeptical, like, what is this whole Christian thing about? What are these people doing? And I hope you know both ends of the spectrum are welcome in this place. But whichever camp you find yourself in this morning, anywhere in between, you have more than likely faced this battle within the battle. It's the battle in our minds. Your mind hosts a war. There's a battlefield going on within your mind because that's where Satan tries to attack us. Your mind is where the devil tries to send doubts. It's where he tries to send disbelief. Your mind is where Satan tries to remind you of your wounds and of your hurts. It's where he promotes these rebellious thoughts Lust, selfish desires, sinful desires. Have you ever heard that phrase, sin starts between your ears? So does selfishness. So does bitterness. Because what happens is we think about it and then we act on it. And we can consciously or unconsciously program our emotional and mental hardwiring toward sin and selfishness and negativity. And like, if that doesn't sum up 2020, I don't know what does, right? But the good news is that we can correct this pattern too. Dr. Caroline Leaf says in her book titled Switch on Your Brain, as we think, we change the physical nature of our brain. As we consciously direct our thinking, we can wire out toxic patterns of thinking, and then we can replace them with healthy thoughts. Every time you have a thought, it is actively changing your brain and your body, for better or for worse, and you get to decide. The Apostle Paul writes it like this in his letter to the church in Corinth, 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5. He says, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. In fact, just to further reinforce the truth that we're in the midst of a spiritual battle, let me reread that and just add a few of the verses prior. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 3 says, for though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons that we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish strongholds and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. We either protect our minds or we pollute them. How do we protect our minds? How do we go about protecting our minds. God has given us the tools and the strategies to protect our minds. Here are some of our battle plans for defense against the enemy's tactics to try to infiltrate our mind. If you're taking notes, there's three steps we're going to talk about. Step number one, identify. Identify the toxic patterns that are the strongholds, the mentalities, the beliefs, the ideologies, the predispositions, the perspectives, the leanings, the lies, anything that is not from the mind of God or rooted or influenced by truth, anything that is not written in the entirety of God's word. Like, take a second. Do some self-evaluation. Do some internal reflection. What are the toxic thought patterns for you? Because these aren't all the enemy's fault. Like we can't necessarily put all of the blame on him and just absolve ourselves of responsibility because we often cooperate with Satan when we dwell on and rehearse and replay these false truths over and over and over again in our minds. The first step is that we have to just identify what are the toxic patterns that are strongholds in my life. And once you've done that, step two is to confess. Confess the wrong thought processes to God. And this one, it's relatively straightforward, so I'm not going to spend a ton of time here. But 
the bottom line is, like, we've just got to stop making excuses. Like, admit that we need help. Admit that we want change through prayer, through your quiet time with the Lord, through worship in a corporate setting. Confess the thought processes to God. And then the third step, this is where the rubber meets the road. We have to dismantle and then rebuild. Dismantle your own old ways of thinking and then rebuild them upon God's. Romans 12, 2 says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. The act of renewing or protecting our mind is a process of repealing and replacing. Like we've got to peel, think of when you peel a potato. We've got to peel back the layers, the old ways of thinking, the old thought processes, our old thought life. And then we've got to replace it with God's thought for us. God's thoughts about us. God's thoughts in the midst of our situation. And understand too, like, This isn't a passive assignment. This is war. Like, this is how we enter in and engage into the spiritual battle that we're facing. We've got to dismantle, take apart what's not working anymore, take apart what's broken, and then rebuild on what is truth. Because we either protect our minds or we pollute them about protecting so maybe you're like okay well how are we polluting our minds then by not doing any of the above that we just talked about like by just being passive and just kind of a bystander and just allowing whatever I think or whatever I feel or whatever thought wanders its way into my brain to then make its home in my mind just because you think it doesn't mean it's truth Like, you may think you're worthless. That's not true. You may think you have no purpose. That's not true. If you let that thought roam free and grow in your mind, it will be so destructive to you. Psalm 139 tells you that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. That is truth. And I have no clue what your life was like growing up. I don't know how you were raised. I don't know what hardships you faced or are currently facing. I can't speak to the way that you were treated or the lack thereof. But what I do know is that when we allow what people speak to us and what they speak over us to replay negatively in our minds until it becomes our own words, it can be so destructive to our lives. Just because they said it doesn't mean it's truth. We don't have to receive what isn't truth. And I want to invite the band up as we get ready to close. There's a second way that we can pollute our minds. We also pollute our minds by what we allow to enter them. The things we see, the things we listen to, the things we watch, the things we read, It all pours into our mind. Ultimately, we pollute our minds when we think on things that are the opposite of Philippians 4, verse 8. That verse reads, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about those things. That is what truth is. So we pollute our minds when instead of thinking about what's true, we obsess over the lies. Instead of thinking about what's honorable, we consider what's dishonorable. Instead of thinking about what's lovely, we give in to thoughts of lust. Instead of the admirable, we focus on being judgmental and critical. This is how the enemy keeps a leg up on us in the spiritual battle, by trying to attack our minds. And then when we leave ourselves unprotected, we're just like a sitting duck. If instead we will be so intentional 
about protecting our minds. This will help us to remain steadfast in each and every battle that we face. Would you stand with me? Like I said earlier, you can choose to keep your eyes open. You can close your eyes if you'd like. Just a moment of focus and concentration between you and the Lord. This moment isn't about anybody else in the room besides you and Jesus. I want to give you two invitations. The first, if you're sitting in here, or maybe you're watching online, if you have never made the decision to follow Jesus with your life, I want to give you an opportunity to do that right now. And this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where it might take a little bit of courage. It might take a little bit of braveness, a little bit of boldness. But I promise you it is a thousand percent worth the adventure that comes with following Jesus. If you're in here and you'd like to make that decision today, would you just raise your hand so I can pray with you? Praise the Lord. Praise God. What we're going to do, whether you've been a Christian your entire life or maybe you're making that decision for the very first time today, we're all collectively going to pray this prayer together. And there's nothing special about the words. They're not written in any particular order. This is just a significant moment between you and Jesus. So would you pray? Repeat this prayer after me. Say, dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I can't do this life alone. I know you died on the cross and rose again three days later to have relationship with me. Would you come into my heart and make it your home? In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All of heaven is rejoicing right now. That is a huge deal. That's a big deal. I want you to know that is incredible. It's the best decision you will ever make, hands down. And the second invitation, and then we're going to have a time of response and worship. If you just bow your heads one more time, maybe you're in here and you just find yourself battling with some of the things that we're talking about today. You're struggling, whether it's a battle in your mind, maybe it's depression, maybe it's discouragement, maybe it's anxiety, maybe it's fear, maybe it's negative thought processes. If that's you this morning and you just say, man, today I want to begin walking in a new way. You would like the help with the Spirit of God to begin taking your thoughts captive and rebuilding on what God says is true. If you're in here and that's you this morning, would you raise your hand so I can pray with you as well? That's a lot of us. Lord, I pray a spirit of revival and renewal in our minds this morning. God, I pray that by your spirit, by your grace, we would learn to take every thought captive. In this moment, Spirit of God, would you undo what the world has told us? Would you undo what the enemy has tried to do? And would you rebuild our minds, rebuild our thought processes according to your spirit and your word and your truth, Lord? Today we declare a spirit of revival coming, and it starts right here in our hearts and in our minds by your grace and by your spirit in Jesus name amen let's worship together
darkest night, you can light it up, oh, you can light it up, God of revival, let hope arise, let hope arise, death is overcome, you've already won, you've already I don't know about you this morning, but as I think about the mind and the helmet of salvation in this message, it took me back to how many prisons I have created in my own mind because I bought into some lies or I bought into some doubts. And I just feel like God is like saying today is the day that we're going to just break down those prison walls that surround your mind and the salvation of your God is coming and it's going to restore and going to renew um you may go oh i'm i'm just going to will it into place let me tell you i am a stubborn strong-willed person you ask my mama i am but i am not stubborn enough and strong-willed enough to defeat what the enemy tries to do in my mind and that's where i need the word i need the truth I need to be transformed by the salvation of the living God in my mind. And so I just encourage you today, don't go out of here going, oh, i got to get into this middle battle and do it on my own. No, that's why we put on the helmet of salvation, because it's in the salvation that we get the restoration. So allow God to transform your mind the way you think. And watch what he's going to do. If you made a decision today for Jesus Christ, we want to give you some information. We want to help you. We want to walk with you in your journey. So you can stop by the hub. If you are online watching and you gave your heart to Jesus this morning, uh, direct message us. Fill out one of those connect cards online. We will get a hold of you. We will get information to you. Why? Because it's the most important decision you will ever make in your life. And we want to walk in that journey with you and be a part of it because God's going to do some great things in your life. So thanks for joining us this morning. Those that are here in the sanctuary, as we exit, we're going to exit out the side door. The last rows, you'll leave first. Again, we are trying to be safe. I don't want your germs, your spittle, or whatever that is. All right, keep it to your cell. All right, God bless you guys. Have a great day. We'll see you next week. Thank you, Pastor Sue. <laughs>